Hey there everyone, Hamid is here with another Angular video. Today I want to talk about standalone components and I will try to uh, cover everything about this topic. Actually, I will answer to a bunch of questions like what are the standalone components, why we should use them, uh, or what are the advantages of uh, using the standalone components compared to ng modules, how we should create them, how we should use them in our project, how uh, to load components lazily, and how we can get rid of traditional ng modules in our project. Okay, let's jump into the first topic, which is the standalone component definition. In fact, standalone components types or directives are nothing but just some simple components that marked with standalone true. So uh, you can expect you have a simple component that only a property added to its decoration part, which is a standalone true. Although there is another property that will be added to your components and its imports array. It's like ng module, basically, but there are some difference between them, technically. Um, on the other hand, you can import modules, components, everything um, in your components. Okay, They are independent and they can be used everywhere you want. No need to um, register them in your modules or other components in order to use them. They are totally independent. The next topic is why we should use it. What are the advantages of using standalone components instead of non standalone components or let's say traditional components that we had already in our projects well standalone components brings many advantages the first one is creating them is super easy uh probably a question came up to your mind and you ask what the hell is this uh, we, we didn't have any problem with creating components before. Yes, of course, but when you wanted to create a component, or let's say when you wanted to have a page in your project, you had to have a module in your project and register your component in your module, then you will be able to use it, right? But with the standalone components, there is no need to have such things. You only need to mark your components as a standalone true and everything will be ready for use. Because of this, you will have less boilerplate code in your project. Some of the files won't be exist, like modules, main modules, I mean features modules. On the other hand, Standalone components will bring performance enhancement to your project because uh, they are independent and you can uh, load their bundle independently. You won't have a huge module that includes many components or um, modules. You only will load a components that includes its code and its their de its dependencies. It's great, so you can prefer this to traditional modules. So far, so good. I guess up to now we understood uh, what are the standalone components and why we should use them. Now it's time to uh, show it in code. Stay tuned and let's see what I have for you today. Okay, I already prepared this project for you, which is a super simple project. Uh, it's not complex. It only includes two modules, uh, which are product and user module. Let me show you the structure of the project. Uh, this is the product module. It includes product module for like routine module. 
and also two components uh, which represent two pages at the least. Uh, this is the user, user module. It only includes a list component. And here it is, our app module and app component. Okay, um, it's super simple, right? As a first step, I want to create a standalone component. Let's just start from here, our terminal, and big a new component. Let's call this new component edit and set its flag standalone because we are going to create the standalone component. Let's open the edit.component.ts file. Take a look at this part. It has two additional fields here, which are standalone and imports. Uh, as I told you, in order to make a simple component to standalone component, we need to add this uh, to our component. And also these type of components as imports array, like what we had on engine modules. You can simply import uh, whatever you want, like material module or even HTTP client module, whatever. Uh, so <clears throat> this is the basic standalone component. Let me add it to our routing and uh, show you the result. Okay, here, I'm gonna add it here. Edit. Component. And here in the list component, I need to add a link over here. Okay. Get my thing for that. Get it. Uh, let's check the browser. But I place the link pad and edit, and it is working, right? So it's not a normal component, but there's a simple difference. Let's take a look at the product.module and check the declaration array. You can see there is no edit component here. So this is the, in our, I have a difference. Standalone components are not adding to the declaration area of modules because they are not belonging to any module. So, um, so far so good. And uh, up to now, we understood that what are the standalone components, why we should use them, and how we should create them. Okay. Now it's time to show you how we should migrate our project to standalone application because. With this journey, you will learn how to uh, make huge differences and huge changes in your project. Let's start with checking the main.ts file. Here, we are using Bootstrap module. It means uh, we are starting our project with a module. And as an initial module, we are passing the app module, right? So. This is a start point for our migration. Let me comment this code here and use another method instead of bootstrap module. Instead of bootstrap module, I'm going to uh, add bootstrap application and pass a component to it. This component should be a standalone. Let's get past the app component since it's our uh, root component, right? Okay. Let's check the browser, see the result. Here, we have an error. The error says the app component is not marked as standalone component. So let's go back to the code and mark the app component as a standalone component. Back to the browser and check the error again. Okay. Uh, the error says app, app component is a standalone. It cannot be declared in each module. And it shows the declaration array. So this refers to app module, right? So let's check the app module here and delete the app component from declaration array. But I told you 
standalone components are not belong to any module. So far, so good. Okay, we have another error. It says router outlet is not a known element. And our error is on app.component.html, right? Let's check the app component. Here. Compiler is showing an error to us, and it is reasonable because our app component is a standalone component, and we are going to use router outlet, which is uh, a um, feature of router module. So we need to import router modules here. Okay, add the router module and let's check the alt. Okay, we have uh, a different error. Uh, error saying it is standalone app component activate root, not provider for activate root. Okay, uh, let's check the main.ps file. Okay, here we are bootstrapping uh, a component. Okay, but we are not declaring the configuration or router for it. So let's pass the configuration of the plug update for the app component and say um, provide a router update and right. And so we have a router which is what in this alter or root o and force on and we don't need this app routing module we just need this root route i'm going to add it here it but uh, like a module, we need to uh, provide, sorry, provide the providers array. So here, I can pass it like this. Let me check the method, provide router. Yeah, it loves this. And let's pick the app module. Okay. Uh, there's no app routing module here. And also, it's, we are not going to use app module here like this. We don't fit app module anymore, right? So we can simply delete it. Also, the app routing module is uh, not useful for us, so we can delete this as well. We can remove the necessary imports from here. Uh, also, we can change the name of this file. Let's change it to root. Route it, remove the app module file, and go to our main.ps file. You will be on the reports and hit the closer. Okay, our app is up and running, everything is working. Reports are good. So, uh, we just remove uh, the app module, right? And our application is a standalone right now, uh, since it's root. Component is standalone and then our structure just changed. But um, as you notice, we still can use the traditional modules like this. But for the sake of showing you how uh, we can have a, a complete standalone application, I'm going to uh, apply this strategy to the other modules. And I want to start with product module. So Let's uh, jump to the smaller and uh, remove the products module. Okay. And then let's rename the uh, product routing the modules file. Uh, let's say it's product stop around. Yes. And we don't need the routing modules anymore. Or and let's rename it like products underline all oh. 
Link and lead string motif. That's a Okay. Go back here. Over. Let me for this first. Forward. From uh, products of routes. And let's go back here at the root.route. And instead of this, we will have products route. Okay. Or so good. Let's check the browser. Okay. We have an error here in valid configuration product list. Component must be standalone. Okay. Then we created this component. Was in the standalone, so we need to uh, change it to standalone component. Also, we need to do this at standalone through. Okay. The browser. Okay. The admin rule. F, uh, sorry, any existing product uh, are not uh, links anymore. Why? We have this situation. It's happening because they belong to rotor module, but we didn't add the router module into the list component. So let me add the router module here. Router module. Okay. And click the browser. See, links are working and everything is up and running. So far, so good. Um, Okay, everything is fine here. We can do this for user. Okay, hello. We can start our works with removing user relating module. And we're naming this. Um, and let's export this. So, this one. And oh, oh sorry. Yep. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, from here, are you all? No, I guess. Oh, are you sure? Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll take it here. And so, user model, we need the route. Okay, let's check the error list. We will have this error here again. Need to mark this class down below. Ready? Click the poser. Okay, every part of the project is up and running and working. So, we just migrated to uh, standalone every uh, module of our project, but there's another part that I wanted to tell you, and it's about loading components lazily. As you know, before we could load uh, our module lazily while load children, right? But now we are able to load our components lazily uh, by getting help of uh, standalone components. But how we can do this? Do that um, instead of um, finding components or any component like this in our road, I will just simply say uh, load component component and force. Uh, sorry, it's like let's open dot bin and load the item component, which is list component, right? So, in this way, we can load our list component lazily. Also, we can apply this for the other component. At least, it did. And Okay. Right. So let's take the browser. 
update. So everything is working and this is very nice. Believe me, it will affect on the final bundle size in the enterprise project and uh, it's a good boost for your project performance. Okay guys, I tried to cover everything related to standalone components, but if you felt that um, there is something that I missed, please let me know in the comments. Also, if you like the video, please support the channel and hit the like button and take care.